Hey everybody. Um, this is a little bit later than it usually is um, because I had a really crazy Sunday um, and I'll tell you about that in just a moment. But I wanted to say hey. Um, this is vlog post number three um, just about what's going on in my world as a producer, rapper, PhD lady. So yeah, this week was um, really awesome. Oh my gosh, I just thought about all of the cool stuff that happened this week. Okay, um, so I got back from uh, my friend Raheem Jarbo slash Mega Ran. You may have heard of him. His wedding was in Phoenix last week, and I um, got back to New York City on um, Monday, and um, I was picked up from the airport by Sosa, a sound engineer who's who's um, helping to mix and master and record um, my next project. Um, so he picked me up, and when he picked me up, he had two final mixes of two album cuts, and they said, and we so we played them on the way the way back um, to the studio, and it was like so 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 dope i was getting emotional definitely 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 because they sound so good so we went back to his studio and then i recorded the kind of like um so the way that i usually record is that um like a new track is that i'll work on the track the week prior i'll like usually make the beat um and then I'll think about the content and then I'll make some raps to go over that beat. Then I'll record it in my little home studio, my own little home rig. I have a, um, a microphone um, upstairs that I record on. And then I'll kind of practice it all week long. And so by the time I end up going to New York City at the end of the week to record, you know, it's like coming off, it's off the tip of my tongue. However, this time I ended up like completing everything I liked about the song literally just hours before recording it like I came up with the, the final piece of the chorus on the airplane <laughs> from Phoenix so I had, didn't have that so we what we ended up doing was kind of sketching out the song instead of completing it um I sent him my production stems and he kind of you know lined everything up and um didn't quite mix it but at least got the levels right and um then I recorded the first the the, the entirety of the song and um, I've been listening to it all week now so that I can practice it to when I go in um, this coming Thursday, I will be able to wrap it in a, in a real, real way. I mean, I think that the distinction between this project, that's this forthcoming project and past projects is that like in my mind, hmm, how do I put it? It feels a little like stilted, like some of my past projects, they feel stilted in the sense that I wasn't, wasn't really fully embodying the feeling of what I was saying. And I think that that comes with recording yourself because you're just trying to get the words out and make sure that you're doing it in the right way. Of course, unless it's a song that you've performed multiple times, but when you have a new body of work, not many of the songs off that project you'll have performed a number of times and perfected and unless you've been sitting on it forever, which is not the case for me. I'm, I'm working on this in real time. Um, so uh, I think with this project, it's great to have Sosa there to kind of coach me and be like, um, you know, that wasn't a good take. <laughs> Do another take. Go, you can come harder than that. You know, I really, really appreciate that um, about him and about working with him. So... Uh, la, la, la. uh, sorry, I'm a little out of it. I just, I just woke up from a nap, <laughs> a very, very poorly timed nap because it's like late. So I guess I'm gonna be doing an all nighter, but that's okay. I do it regularly. So yeah, we recorded this. We sketched out this track, and then I jumped in my car, and the track that I, I sketched out was one about. Um, I talked about it on the last video, but my anxieties around headlining and, um, and feeling like. It's dope that I have supporters, but questioning whether like when I want them or, or need them to come and support me in person, if they're going to be there or if there's going to be like a barrier and excuse. And again, it's nothing against my supporters, um, but that's just what happens, right? You invite 500 people to an event on Facebook, mad people RSVP. 
30 people show up. You know, that's a dynamic that I don't really appreciate. Just be honest about whether you're going to go to something or not, whether you're going to support somebody or not. So I had my little butt in the car and headed back here. Um, and I ended up uh, po uh, procrastinating so much that I were finally graded a huge chunk of papers like the night before the class. And that's a very bad idea. Don't be like me, kids. If you have mad papers to grade, grade them in like small bunches. Do not grade like 17 papers in a row, which is what ended up happening for me because I waited until the last minute. It was not not fun. I don't recommend it at all, even a little bit. Um, so I only had that one class this week because I canceled class on Monday because I was coming back from Phoenix. Um, so it was pretty chill. Um, the, research, the research proposals for the kids in my class seemed pretty dope. They're supposed to look up a topic, research a topic about related to sound and uh, science and technology studies. So I'm looking forward to looking at their papers. Um, then on Thursday, I had a show with um, Chesky. Um, I'm not sure if he's going on a tour, but um, Ithaca Underground uh, set up a, like a music series. So Ithaca Underground is this like it's a nonprofit um, group here in in Ithaca, obviously from the name that sets up different like shows and performances for artists who have kind of a DIY aesthetic. Um, and so I have had so many shows through Ithaca Underground and, and basically attribute most of my like Ithaca fan base to Ithaca Underground putting me on the bill and um, for a variety of different shows. And, and sometimes my, I've, actually, I, speaking of headlining, Ithaca Underground set up my first show that I ever headlined before and it was the dopest thing ever. So I had a show with Chesky um, at the CSMA, as well as my label mate, Christina Camille, at the Community School of Music and Arts. And it was unbelievable. The energy was just right. Sometimes the energy is just right. Like you just know that it's gonna be a very special night. And that's exactly what happened. Everybody gave their heart and soul. Um, the openers, Flo Carius, it's like a duo, rap duo, um, two IC students. Um, and they were going hard. Um, then my label mate, Christina Camille followed and she just, just destroyed her set. She was singing her, her life. She was singing for her life and it was amazing. We all felt the energy. We all touched, felt touched by it. Um, and my homie, David Benjamin came through. He's, he's, he's awesome. He supports me so much. So I was really happy to see him. Um, and, uh, who can, then after that was Mr. McBean. He's like a local rapper, really chill, really laid back vibe, but I'm into, I'm like totally into it. Um, and then next up was me and I was in my feelings a little bit, um, because for those of you who have not been following, there have been a lot of issues here in Ithaca, New York, specifically up at, um, Ithaca college, um, regarding a desire for the Ithaca college president to step down based on his mishandling of a variety of incidents, um, related to black students um, and uh, black alumni, actually. So the night was already kind of charged with that energy. Um, so I performed, you know, I decided to put together a set of songs that touched on, on all of my thoughts and dealings with race um, in this country in a variety of different ways. And people were into it. Chesky was into it. He was like, you know, he took this really epic picture that I really appreciated and posted it up on his Instagram. Um, so yeah, it was good. And when I stepped down, I felt, I felt like I had, um, you know, had these feelings on my chest and it's so nice. That's why I love performing in the way that I do, where I kind of like throw myself into it. And you can hear from my voice is done so because I've been, you know, going hard and it's just, it's such a like cathartic experience. I love, love, love that feeling. Then I was followed by Chesky, who put on a really emotional, high energy, powerful performance. And then the night was closed out by Jay High from the Gun Poets. So it was a really great night. Um, I really appreciated um, the response from the audience, and that was cool. Then I had, uh, this weekend was really, really special because So Said Net ended up coming to Ithaca um, for two reasons. And it's like super, I was just so happy to have this opportunity. But, um, the first is that 
I um, performed at a convention on Saturday called Retro Game Con, and it was in Syracuse, New York. For those that don't know, Syracuse, New York is about an hour north of, of Ithaca. Um, so Sosa is a huge gamer. He doesn't really talk about it like that, but he's a huge gamer. He's like really, really good at video games. Um, so we had been talking a little bit and he DJs as well. Excuse me. Um, and he wanted to kind of check out the game, the con world. Cause you know, it, it makes sense that that's something that he, um, kind of starts to check out as somebody who games frequently and has an appreciation for that. But he never really had kind of an entry point because he's a DJ, but, um, doesn't really like DJ. He doesn't do like chip tune stuff or anything like that. So, um, he came to Retro Game Con to be my DJ for the convention. Uh, and it was tons of fun. Um, it was, a, it was a nice convention. A lot of people came through. Um, I ended up doing two sets. Um, and I was really anxious about that because, you know, for A, I didn't want people to get sick of me. But I was just anxious in general because, um, and this is, this is a complex I always have as it relates to conventions and stuff like that, is that I don't know if I have enough content that speaks, you know, so specifically to video games. And I think part of that anxiety comes from me comparing myself to like Mega Ran, who has so much content, it's bananas. He has so many projects, so many albums, so many video games he's discussed, you know, and I kind of have my little con Metroid concept DP, and then I discuss my, my love for games and cartoons in other ways through my other projects. But I'm, I'm like, I get anxious about going to these spaces because I never know what the reception will be when I decide to open up about some of my personal issues that might use video games to as reference points. Um, but they were here for it. And what was really, I think the best part of it were the, like the little kids. There were these, there were two kids and well, actually no, it was three kids and they were so into it. Like there was a little link and he, for my second set, he sat down. There were like these beanbag chairs that I brought up to the stage so people could just chill for the second set. And this, uh, like little link, he sat, he was like posted up in a, in a beanbag chair. and was just like bobbing his head the whole time. It was the cutest thing I've ever seen in my life. I almost melted into a puddle. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Um, and then there was a little Mario who was like, he was so cute. He actually ended up giving me a kiss on the cheek later. That was like the most precious thing in the whole entire world. And so my homies came through who had seen me perform in Syracuse before um, at the top of this year or in past years. So it was like, it was just good times, good vibes. Um, I sold a little bit of merch and um, yeah, I really appreciate that opportunity. So thank you to Retro Game Con. Um, and, and that's why my voice is totally, totally toast. Um, and Sosa killed it. Like it was so dope having a DJ because usually I go and, you know, I have to click through my stuff and it's a little unprofessional, um, a little clumsy. Uh, so it was, it was more streamlined to be able to have Sosa there. And then the second reason why Sosa was, was up here, um, kind of actually the primary reason was because I'm an assistant residence hall director at a music focused dorm. And so what I end up doing is, is often bringing up like my friends or people that I know who are like either in the industry, who are like, you know, um, in the industry from like a performer perspective or, um, are sound engineers, that kind of thing. And I have them either come up and do shows or, um, you know, come up and give classes. And that's what Sosa was doing. He was giving a master class on mixing and, well, mixing primarily. Um, and a little bit of discussion about recording and a little bit of discussion about mastering. And um, so he ended up doing that this afternoon, which is why this video is a little bit late. Um, and it was a huge success. He talked about his history in, um, as it relates to recording, mixing, mastering. He talked about the different kinds of like, audio engineering, um, and how they're all conflated now. Um, yeah. And then he kind of, he played some tracks. He ended up playing one of mine and I was like, Oh, I got so nervous. I, I didn't realize how nervous I am to share, have my things shared, but the, the kids seemed to like it. And, um, there were great questions. There were some kids who stayed like maybe 45 minutes to an hour after the, the like formal class had ended just to like ask him questions and like share their stuff. It was really touching. Um, really, really sweet. I was very happy to see that. So, 
um, yeah, it was a total success. And I love being able to use my position um, here at JAM to highlight the amazing work of my friends and colleagues and homies, you know, because um, I have such a talented circle. It's, it's, I don't even think of it as like, um, it's not like nepotism. I guess all I'm trying to say is that like they're genuinely talented and it's even if I didn't know some of the people that I've brought up to perform, um, I still would feel compelled to do that just because they're so dope. So it was a good weekend. Um, let's see if I've got anything else to report. I am one song away from feeling like I have kind of a whole body of work, um, but I still want to come up with about four or five kind of little like cute joints that I could just like, you know, toss out there um, before the project. Uh, Sosa suggested that, and I think it's a good idea, you know, give them something, you know, wet their palettes and then, and then drop the for real, for real. Oh my God, I'm like, I forgot. I also got the video back for 1080p. Oh my God. It's super dope. It's very, very cool. Um, Vince, the director, totally captured what I was going for, um, just the feel. So I'm like really excited. And, and now I'm, I'm plotting a little bit about timing, you know, I don't want to just drop the thing. And, and so I'm really, really excited about, about that. I have some other stuff in the works, but until it's finalized, I can't really share. Um, so that's where I'm at right now. I w actually wanted to use this video to talk a little bit about some of the struggles I've been having with, um, with like friendships and stuff lately, but I think I'll save that maybe for next time. I had such an exciting week that there's just way too much to share. Oh my God. I completely forgot to mention probably the biggest thing, I'm going on tour, yo. I'm going on a West Coast tour with the homies, the Double Clicks, whom I actually met through my um, performance at Geek Girl Con in Seattle last October. Um, I've been following them, you know, for quite a while. They're, they just are like really smart, re make really good music, very funny very insightful, really interesting, um, and just have been totally killing it. Like they had shows in Australia this past year. Um, so uh, we're going on a short uh, run at the end of December because we're both performing at the convention Gamer X. Um, and so it makes sense to kind of frame the tour around that um, convention. Uh, we'll be hitting a number of stops, Seattle, LA, um, San Jose, uh, my geography is questionable, so I got to look at the tour schedule again, but it's on my Facebook page and I'm going to make posts about it on my um, Instagram soon and my, you know, I'll be on Twitter as, it, as the date gets closer. Um, I believe the first day is December 8th. So I'm so excited. I can't wait. If you're a West Coaster, I better see you or you should lose my number. I'm just kidding. Well, not really. But yeah, please, please, please come out to the show. It's going to be a good time. I put on a good show. They put on a great show. Um, support dope artists. Support, support dope women. Um, and yeah, I'll be talking a lot more about that, I think, in future vlog posts. But I had to put that in there. Um, gosh, this was such a dope week.